it is hard to understand how any individual in the agency could overlook the historical, even the perso personal significance of those text messages. Right. And so it kind of it shines a bigger spotlight, I guess, on, on those missing text messages when, you know, the Trump White House, the Trump National Security Council and the Secret Service agents themselves all knew the magnitude of what was happening. I mean, in, in that same radio chatter, of course, you know, the Secret Service agents were, were, were saying, you know, goodbye to their loved ones because they thought they might not make it out of the Capitol alive. And yet, you know, we have this situation uh, where 11 days after that took place, uh, well, 10 days after that took place, uh, you know, Congress requested uh, their communications, and 11 days later, they were all erased. And so, it, we, I, you know, I think you can see this as a bit of a pattern, you know, all the erased text messages, all of the missing White House phone logs. Everyone knew that January 6th was bad, which makes me think of the missing evidence uh, in a new light. Yeah, Barb, DHS has asked the Secret Service to stop its own internal investigation into the missing text. Why is that necessary? What does that tell you? Well, the fact that the, the inspector general is now conducting a criminal investigation, I think what he's indicating is he doesn't want anything to interfere with that. You know, that somebody was looking into it and uh, accidentally destroyed evidence, or that people are taking statements from someone and then, uh, you know, they take one in which they contradict themselves. So I think he wants everybody to stand down, get out of my way, because this has just gotten very serious. I'm going to investigate this, and I don't want anything to distract from the mission that I'm doing, which is criminal in nature, by far the more serious. You know, sometimes when you're in an agency, there are all kinds of investigations just to, you know, do after-action reports when there's a mistake so that it doesn't happen again, that sort of thing, administrative things. And here, I think he's making it clear that there are potential criminal penalties for people, and they need to take that very seriously. Hugo, what can you share about the three Secret Service members who we have learned have retained their own attorneys? Yeah, I think this is really significant, right? I mean, uh, we learned that the driver in the, uh, the, uh, the presidential vehicle on January 6th, the dispatch is reporting, has hired uh, Zach Terwilliger as his attorney. I mean, Zach Terwilliger, of course, is the son of George Terwilliger, who is representing Mark Meadows, the former White House chief of staff. So I think that's a really interesting connection. But the fact that these Secret Service agents are now retaining private counsel, I think, shows they now know the magnitude and the seriousness of this kind of criminal investigation being conducted by the Office of the Inspector General over at DHS. I mean, this is not a step you would take lightly. And But what's interesting from the Select Committee side is they think that Secret Service agents would not have retained private counsel if they had thought they had done nothing wrong. I mean, it might be a prudent move anyway to retain private counsel when you're under criminal investigation. But it sounds like that retainers, those or those retainers happened before the announcement of the criminal investigation, which makes us, the select committee very suspicious about what was going on, you know, with, with the message deletions and their motives and their intent to cooperate uh, with the committee going forward.